I have a hard time thinking about somebody as unqualified for their job as Karine Jean-Pierre is unqualified to essentially be the White House spokesperson or the White House press secretary. Now, of course, I mean, Joe Biden is equally as unqualified, if not even more unqualified to be president, so there is that. But like I always say, Joe Biden's got an excuse. Karine Jean-Pierre, no excuse. Just incompetence and dishonesty, nothing else. Well, today's Karine Jean-Pierre highlight, or I guess we could call it low light, is exactly that. I mean, it's the perfect mix. A dishonest Biden shill actor who also happens to be completely incompetent and can't understand basic concepts when presented with the facts. Surprisingly enough, coming from the White House press corps. Doesn't happen often, but sometimes Karine Jean-Pierre is asked a real question, and boy, when that happens, well, you get moments like these. Here she is looking like a deer caught in the headlights, not knowing what hit her, and her response or her non-response pretty much tells the whole story. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so it seems like some of these mainstream media journalists are finally starting to catch on that policies or policy changes have end results. You know, they mean something. They do something. Sometimes they do something good. Sometimes the results are positive, and sometimes, well, when Joe Biden makes the decisions, the results are always, well, extremely negative. Take a look at this. I want to ask you about um, current energy prices and Iran, if I could. Um, so Iran makes 70% of its revenue from oil. Um, it's doubled that oil output since 2019, adding $40 billion to revenues. So are the president's current energy policies giving Iran enough money to fund terror groups? Because the price, well, the price of oil has gone up under this president. Uh, the former President Trump, the pr average price of Brent oil was $58. Um, under this president, it's $83 a barrel. So the price of oil is more. Um, is that giving Iran enough money to fund these terror groups in the Middle East? I, I mean, I, I wholeheartedly disagree that we're, we're, you know, we're, our actions are giving, is that what you're saying? Can you say that again? The current energy policies in the U.S. From, from our from, energy um, policies. Yeah. Yeah, seeing the price of oil go up because okay. when you when you restrict um, supply here in the United States, it's forcing get, to get the global supply from somewhere else. OPEC is cutting prices of oil, so the price of oil goes up. Yeah, and we're not part of OPEC, as you right. know. Right, right. So they're going to make their decisions on on whatever they decide. We are not a member of OPEC. But the administration has decided to regulate the oil industry here in the U.S. and restrict investment, uh, future investment in the oil supply in the U.S. And, and so is, is, as the price of oil goes up, is that giving Iran enough money to fund these terror groups? It seems to be a big jump. Uh, and so uh, certainly I'm not going to speak into that type of hypothetical. It sounds like a hypothetical that you're asking me. So certainly I'm not going to weigh, in, weigh so into no this. In I'm policies. just not going to weigh into uh, weigh into a hypothetical here. Go ahead, Phil. What is so complicated? Either Karine Jean-Pierre is dumb and like literally doesn't understand the point that this guy's making, or it's just an act. She knows that he's right. She knows that there's a correlation. She knows that they are failing, whether purposefully or not. And so she's stalling for time trying to come up with something. Her snarky genius response was, well, we're not OPEC, and so <laughs> I don't understand the question. You see the face that she's making? I mean, she thinks she's so smart. She's making this face as if she's confused, as if it's a dumb question, but it is anything but. The only person who looks dumb here is obviously Karine Jean-Pierre. I mean, just look at that smug, arrogant facial expression and those slight facial movements. What don't you get, KJP? You know, you're acting all surprised, but you shouldn't be surprised considering we have literally been yelling from the mountaintops for years that this is exactly what is going to happen. This is why energy independence is so important. We live in a global world and there's this interesting concept called supply and demand. There's a whole lot of demand for oil. If we decide to pull back, if we decide that we're going to start imposing taxes and regulations as well as stopping federal drilling permits, it doesn't mean that the entire world is going to follow us. In fact, quite the opposite. If anything, it creates a vacuum. We could be producing our own energy. We could be totally energy independent, taking away leverage, taking away power from authoritarian regimes, and in this case, Iran, a terrorist funding authoritarian regime. But instead, what do we do? We play directly into the hands of OPEC. We play directly into the hands of China, Russia, Iran. We've been saying that forever. That is the importance of energy independence. But instead, what did we do? Well, we gave all the leverage to the Saudis. And thanks to Joe Biden, we allowed the Iranian regime to fully recover economically. I showed you guys this chart just the other day in a video. Do you see the devastating effect only a couple years of Donald Trump had on the Iranian regime's GDP? I mean, truly devastating. Going from 
2016, that was Obama's last year in office, to 2018, their GDP completely inverted. I wonder if that had something to do with Donald Trump's stances on foreign policy, sanctions, tariffs, and maybe something to do with Donald Trump's energy policies. Of course it did. What you're seeing here is essentially visual representation of Trump's policies. Then the moment Joe Biden takes over, well, you see the same kind of instant result now, don't you? And if that wasn't enough, Joe Biden decided to add insult to injury by recently promising to release $6 billion in withheld frozen funds to the Iranian regime. Now they're telling us that actually they're not going to release the $6 billion, but it's too little too late and the damage has already been done. Joe Biden's policies are funding terrorism, whether directly or indirectly. Directly by, I don't know, leaving billions of dollars of weapons, munitions, and equipment, top military technology, to the Taliban in Afghanistan, arming terrorist groups across the Middle East. I'd say that's pretty direct or indirectly by weakening the United States of America on the world stage. This is the result of weak foreign policy. This is the result of apologetic, naive, globalist, liberal policy. This is what you get. It's the same way Joe Biden is funding the cartels. Maybe he's not directly funding the cartels, although we don't know exactly. Well, actually, we kind of do. The whole Fast and Furious scandal, kind of an example of exactly that. But Joe Biden's border policy is a whole lot more dangerous. We're just allowing open borders. Because my compassion, what it really is, is weak American non-leadership. And who stands to benefit? It certainly isn't America. No, it's the cartels and the drug smugglers and the human smugglers. Idiotic policies that embolden, empower, and enrich our enemies and weaken and endanger us all. It's pretty freaking cut and dry. Joe Biden pretty much stepped out of the oil production game or the energy producing game, stagnating growth in America. What then happens on the global market? There's less competition, less production, and more leverage, more power in the hands of OPEC nations and terrorist authoritarian regimes. All of a sudden, they get to manipulate the markets. The Saudis can say, well, you know what? We're going to start producing billions of barrels less every single year. Why not? The prices will go up. We'll have to work less. We'll refine less fuel. No harm, no foul. We work less, we get paid more. Supply and demand prices are going to go up and we're going to rake in the big bucks. We give the power to oil nations. We give the power to Iran, where all of a sudden their oil profits are nearly double what they were just a couple years ago under Donald Trump. Then all of a sudden we're surprised when Hezbollah and Hamas carry out the attacks that they did. No, we're not surprised because it's a result of idiotic Biden Obama appeasement garbage policies. Meanwhile, you open the TV to MSNBC and you're subjected to this kind of propaganda. I am interested in what Liz Cheney says, Mary, but I'm more interested in when she says it. And it was interesting to me that she was out yesterday. I mean, she, it's the first time she's spoken since Trump celebrated Hezbollah, called them, quote, very smart. Um, it's the first time she's sort of made an appearance since some of this new reporting has come out, John Carl had some of it, and, and we had it here here um, when that first broke. Um, and it's the first time that I think a broad coalition of Americans realizes that if Donald Trump were president right now, the world would be a much, much more dangerous place with the Middle East on a, on a hair trigger, um, with threats of violence at home with Jewish American communities, with Muslim American communities terrified right now. The country probably couldn't handle a Trump presidency. A broad coalition of Americans realize that if Donald Trump were president right now, the world would be a much, much more dangerous place. Really? What is this broad coalition of Americans? I'm pretty sure the polling data says the exact opposite, and I'm pretty sure Donald Trump was president not that long ago, less than three years ago, and we were signing peace deals in the Middle East, not engaging in proxy wars. You know, we weren't talking about nuclear apocalypse so much back then. It's not hard to understand. You know, you see these politicians talking about peace through strength, peace through strength, and then they pound their fist on the table, and what they mean by peace through strength is, let's get involved in a war. You know what was was real peace through strength? What Donald Trump was doing, using leverage, flexing American economic power to keep people in line. That is peace through American strength. Because Americans' real strength isn't its military power or its politicians like childless Lindsey Graham, who has no vested interest in the future, telling us we need to bomb country A, B, C all the way to Z. American strength is one thing. American strength is based in American capitalism. It's values of personal freedom and economic freedom that make it the economic hub of the world. That is the most powerful poker hand. It's a freaking royal flush 
flush at the table, but Joe Biden keeps folding. And so yes, his energy policies are a huge reason, in fact, probably one of the biggest catalysts relating to the increase in global conflict that we've seen during his first term. And if Karine Jean-Pierre just can't seem to wrap her head around it, then she's either blind, evil, incompetent, or all three. A surprisingly great question from a mainstream media White House press corps journalist. And so we had to talk about it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.